She to be buried in Christian burial, what willfully seeks her own salvation. I tell thee, she is. Therefore make her grave straight. The crown I hath sat on her and finds it Christian burial. How can that be unless she drowned herself in her own defence? White has found so. There must be say if end and no, it cannot be elsewhere. Here lies the point. If I drown myself wittingly, it argues an act. And an act of three branches it is to act, to do, to perform. Our gal, she drowned herself with Nay, me. but here you, good man, yeah, tell her. Here lies the water. Good. Here stands the man. Now, if the man go to this water and, and, and drown himself, it is willy-nilly he goes. Mark you now. But if the water come to him and, and drown him, he drowns not himself. Our gal, he that is not guilty of his own death, shortens not his own life. But is this law? Aye, man, is it crowner's quest law? Will you have the truth on it? If this had not been a gentlewoman, she should have been buried out of Christian burial. Why, there thou sayest. And the more pity that great folk of countenance in this world to drown or hang themselves more than they're even Christian. Oh. Go, uh, Master Bain. <coughs> There's no ancient gentlemen but gardeners, ditchers, and grave makers. We hold up Adam's profession. Was he a gentleman? He was the first that ever bore arms. Why? He had none. Not <laughs> even. How dost thou understand the scripture? The scripture says Adam digged. Could he dig without arms? Eh. Uh. I'll put another question to thee. If thou answerest me not to the purpose, confess uh, thyself. Go to. What is he that builds stronger than the mason, the shipwright, or the carpenter? The gallows maker. For that very man lives a thousand tenants. <laughs> I like that work well. <laughs> the gallows does well. But how does it well? It does well for those that do in. And thou is still to say the gallows are built stronger than the church. Our gal, the gallows may do well to thee. <laughs> to it again, come on. <clears throat> Who is he that builds stronger than the mason, the shipwright, or the carpenter? Aye, tell me that and on yoke. Marry, now I can tell. To it. The mass I cannot tell. <laughs> Could your life break no more about it? Your doas will not mend his pace for beating. And when you ask this question next, say, a grave maker. The house that he make last till doomsday. Go, get you to your Fetch me a strop of liquor. <laughs> In youth, when I did look, did look, they thought it was very sweet to contract all the time for mine and all. They thought it was nothing neat. Has this fellow no feeling of his business that he sings in grave making? <laughs> the custom hath made it in him a property of easiness. Tis he and so, the hand of little employment hath the dainty sense. But age, with a stealing step, and claw me in his clutch, and shipped me into the land. It's why I've never been such. That skull had a tongue in it. He could sing once. As the knave jowls it to the ground, as if to a cane's jawbone that did the first murder. Now, this might be the pate of a politician, which this ass now reaches. One that would circumvent God, might he not? Who might, my lord? I'll speak to this fellow. Whose grave is this, sir? Mine, sir. Oh, what kid to play, but to be made, as long as she gets his name. I think it be thine indeed, for thou liest in. <laughs> You lie out in it, sir, and therefore it's not yours. As to me, I lie not in it, and yet it's mine. Thou dost lie it, to be in it, and say it is thine. Tis for the dead, not for the quick. Therefore thou liest. It's a quick lie, sir, to wear again from me to you. What man dost thou dig it for? No man, sir. What woman, then? But none neither. Who is to be buried in? One that was a woman, sir, but rest her soul, she's dead. <laughs> Absolute, the knave is. He must speak by the card, or equivocation will endure us. How long hast thou been grave maker? Of all the days in the year I came to it, that day our late King Hamlet overcame Fortinbras. How long is that since? Oh, cannot you tell that? Every fool can tell that. It's the very day that young Hamlet was born. He that is mad and sent into England. I marry. Why was he sent into England? Why? Because he was mad. He shall recover his wits there. We do not, it's no great matter. Why? It's not be seen in him. There the men are as mad as he. <laughs> <laughs> How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? <coughs> Even losing his wits. Upon what ground? Why, here in Denmark. <laughs> I've been stuck in here, man and boy, thirty years. How long will the man lie there ere he rot? 
Faith, if he be not rotten before he die, as in many hockey courses nowadays that the scarce hold the laying in, he'll last you some eight year or nine year. A tanner will last you nine years. Why he more than another? Why, sir, his hide is so tanned with his trade, he'll keep out water a great while. And your water is a sort of care of your horse and dead body. Ah, here's a skull now. And this skull had lain in the earth three and twenty years. Whose was it? A horse and mad fellow it was. Who do you think it was? <laughs> Nay, I know not. A peasant on him for a mad rogue. He poured a flagon of Rhenish on me head once. This same skull is Yonic skull, sir, the king's jester. This? In that. Let me see. Alas, Boyari. I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest. Most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and now, how borrowed in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. He hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Your gambols, your songs, your flashes of merriment that will want to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chop for. Now get you to my lady's chamber mm -hmm. and tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favour she must come. Make her laugh at that. Prithee, Horatio, tell me one thing. What's that, my lord? Does I think Alexander looks at this fashion of earth? Even so, my lord. And smells so. Even so, my lord. To our base uses we may return, Horatio. Why? May not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till we find it stopping a bunghole? For to consider too curiously to consider so. Oh, faith, not a job, but to follow him thither with modesty enough and likelihood to lead it, as dust. Alexander died, Alexander was buried, Alexander returned to dust. The dust is earth, of earth we make a loam, and why if that loam where he was converted might they not stop a beer barrel? Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that that earth which kept the world in awe should patch a wall to expel the winter's flow. <laughs> Here comes the king, the queen, the count. Who is this they follow with such name at once? This doth betoken the course they followed it with desperate hand, fordo its own life. For such some state. That should be well. Mark. The death was doubtful, and but that great command sways the order, she should have been ground and sanctified of lodge to the last trumpet. But charitable prayers, stones, flints, and pebbles should have been thrown on her. Yet, here she's allowed her virgin crants, her maiden streamants, and the bringing home of bell and burial. Must that no more be done? No more be done. We should profane such service to the dead to seek a requiem to her as to feast departed souls. Lay her, Cadia. When from her fair and unpitted flesh may violet spring. I tell thee, churlish priest, a ministering angel shall my sister be. Would thou lie his howling? What? A fair Ophelia. Sweets to the sweet, farewell. I had hoped thou wouldst have been my Hamlet's wife. I thought thy bride bed to have death seen made and not have strewed thy grave. <coughs> oh. Travel woeful, ten times travel on that cursed head whose wicked deed did thy most ingenious sense deprive thee of. Who long hold off the earth a while, till I have caught her once more in my arms. Now pile her dust upon the quickened death, till of this spot a mountain you have made, to where top of Ophelia and the sky is had of blue limbus. What is he, whose grief bears such an emphasis? Whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder wounded hearers. This is I, Hamlet the Dane. The devil take thyself! 
Now pray so well, and then take thy fingers from my throat. But though I not split as been rash, yet have I in me something dangerous, which not thy wisest fear. Throw off thy hands to the house under! Come to the be quiet! I will fight with him upon this theme until my eyelids are no longer wag. Alas, my son wants thee! I love Demelia! Forty thousand brothers could not with all the quantity of love make up my sum. What wilt thou do for her? She is my lady. For God's sake, come bear him! Slow, son, wilt thou do? Would weep, would fight, would fast, would tear thyself and drink up ice, or eat a crocodile. I'll do it. Just thou come here to why? God face me with leaping in her grave. Be very quick with her, and so will I. And if thou prate of mountains, let them throw millions of acres on us till our ground, singeing as bank gets the burning zone, make us a like a wart. Nay, in that mouth, I will rant as well as thou. This is mere madness, and thus a while the fish will work on him, and none as patient as the female duck when that her golden couplets are disclosed, his silence will sit drooping. Hear you, sir. What is the reason that you use me thus? I loved you ever. But it is no matter. Let Hercules himself do what he may. The cat will mew. And dog will have his day. Strengthen your patience to our last night's speech. We put the matter to the present push. Sweet girl, set some watch over your son. This grave shall have a living monument. An hour of patience shortly shall we see. Till then, impatience that our proceeding be. Thank you. 